I belong to a restoration family, and uh, my great grandfather, grandfather, father, and I'm the fourth generation and uh, running uh, almost centenary restaurant. That the origin of the legislation starts in Brussels. So you have to be very active in Brussels in order to get the best legislation in your own countries. Global Reform BNB, first of all, is nowadays it's uh, an international association. When we started, it was like the response, the answer to uh, a disruption in the market. They were, of course, illegal competence to us or unfair competence to uh, all the legal businesses which were complying with all the laws. If you look at the name, it's not global anti, anti BNB because we are not against this kind of business. We are not offering any accommodation, but we are representing legal accommodation. This phenomenon is arriving where short-term rentals are offered, uh, accommodation is offered without any license, short-term rental guidelines. It is a very practical tool where we have summarized all the important points that any legislation have to take into consideration online travel agencies, name it booking, speedy, and so on. They are also starting to commercialize this uh, kind of short-term rentals. And we have an ambitious challenge of getting, of becoming a zero carbon emission industry. TV Sunday, the power of truth. Ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome one of the wonderful guests today. We have a very powerful personality in the tourism industry who has been serving this industry since many decades. Not just about him, his grandfathers, father, and many generations are in the tourism industry, especially hospitality and food and beverage. Let me welcome wonderful personality from one of the beautiful city in this planet, Barcelona, Mr. Didier Gracia, who is the executive president of Global Reform BNB. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, it is an honor to be with you. And I hope that I could explain to you about myself, the story of my family, and of course, this initiative, Global Reform BNB. Yeah, of course, this is very fantastic idea, Global Reform BNB. And before jumping to that uh, matter and topic, I want to know something about your family background and the background that when you started tourism. Would you mind to explain about it, please? Yes, of course. Um, I would say that uh, I'm in the tourism industry since the day I've been born. Uh, because uh, I belong to a restoration family and uh, my great grandfather, grandfather, father, and I'm the fourth generation uh, running uh, almost centenary restaurant. Um, the story of our restaurant dates back to 1929. And uh, it is nowadays considered one of the most um, reputed uh, traditional restaurants in our region. It is 20 kilometers away of Barcelona, and it is located in a beautiful 16th century house. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, to be part of the day-to-day -day, uh, of the, the, the restaurant activities since I'm, I'm a child uh, gave me the opportunity to, to understand how to welcome uh, our guests uh, from all around the world and, uh, and, and awoke me that the interest uh, not only uh, for the restaurant, but also for the hotelery industry and uh, this is what brought me to study law. Then uh, it brought me also to, to study an LLM on European studies to understand how, um, how to help the, 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 the business industry from the legal perspective. Right. I was working for the European lobby of the hotel, restaurants and cafeterias in Brussels, mm -hmm. and the European umbrella representing the interests of the owners, the, the, the hoteliers, the restaurateurs, and owners of cafeterias uh, of the European Union. I was there working for three years. And, and then um, I came back to be the, the next generation in the family business. Simultaneously, I was cooperating with the Spanish Confederation of helping them to get the best legislation for our sector, uh, yeah. which, by the way, the most of the legislation that affecting the hotel, restaurants and cafeterias in Europe, the start of the legislation, the, the, the origin of the legislation starts in Brussels. So you have to be very active in Brussels in order to get the best legislation in your own countries, in the whole European Union. Yeah, of course, I will, I will come to the point that what you've been doing as the lobbyist of hotel and hospitality industry with the uh, you know, European Union, um, I have a point there. But now I would like to know, 
what is the key concept of Global Reform BNP and okay. why you guys started this business? Yeah. Okay. Global Reform BNP, first of all, is nowadays it's uh, an international association, legal constituted according to Spanish law, because we put our headquarters and our seat in, in, in Barcelona. And it is composed formed by different hotel associations and uh, very selected allied members to discuss how to deal with the short-term rental, the digital distribution industry, and the potential and future threats and challenges of uh, our sector. Okay, but this is what is nowadays. When we started, it was like the response, the answer to uh, a disruption in the market, which was provoked by the eruption of these big platforms not only Airbnb, there were other platforms that they were commercializing, they were offering in their big platforms, short-term rentals, so uh, places where the people could be uh, accommodated without complying with any kind of legislation. They were, of course, illegal competence to us or unfair competence to uh, all the legal businesses which were complying with all the laws. And of course, they did not have to comply with any law. They could offer uh, cheaper prices, which were disrupting the market. And we had no idea how to react because at the very beginning, even the legislator didn't know how to uh, face this phenomena. Right. So the first meeting was, hey, no. hoteliers, hey, guys, what can we do? This is a global problem we have. And if you look at the name, it's not global anti yeah. reform, uh, anti BNB, because yeah. we are not against this kind of business. No, no, no. Yeah, that was my, that was in my head because, well, knowing the name that global reform BNB. Reform. Yeah, reform BNB. Is it something like you guys are competing with the Airbnb? Or no, 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 no. Yeah. Listen, the, yeah. the objective is to have such a legal framework everywhere in the planet yeah where airbnb or other platforms because airbnb is only one of i can name you home away i mean there are many of them many of them yeah, yeah that they will offer accommodation complying with the legislation in the same leveling the playing field right having the same conditions that we have right. and if they do so this kind of platforms or this kind of um let's put it like this new tourist offer yeah if it is legalized i mean they are most welcome i mean i could tell you that in oh, some cities like uh, sir just uh, in a few words how you would like to explain this is different than airbnb what yeah. are the differences in a few words tell me something few words the, yes. we are not offering any accommodation but we are representing legal accommodation of course we are the hoteliers. We are the hotel associations. Uh, hotel association representing owners, hoteliers, which comply with the law. We are the ones who respect all the legislation. And we are the ones cooperating with the authorities in terms of taxes, security. And of course, we are the uh, traditional offer, but we are also the offer of the future. And uh, how do you enroll this? I mean, how client can enroll to this industry? Well, then I would say that in any part of the planet, in any part of the global planet, this phenomenon is arriving where short-term rentals are offered, uh, accommodation is offered without any license. And of course, not taking into consideration uh, the, 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 the opinion of the neighborhood, okay? Because we have seen in so many destinations how this kind of short-term rentals are located in a buildings without uh, creating problems, problems of convivence and cohabitation uh, with the neighbors. And yeah, and, and, and I would say that if, if you are an hotel or you belong to an hotel association in any part of the planet and, and you want to know what's happening, what is going on in, in different destinations, because we have seen that this short-term rental is mainly regulated by the destinations, not because uh, are the destinations the one that have to rule how yeah. they give the permissions in order to open and uh, to concede a license in order to become a 
hospitality business. So yeah. if you are part of these destinations and you consider that, okay, um, I think I want to be informed because I need some assessment in how to proceed to get from my authorities the best legal framework, please contact us. We will be very happy to help you. Yeah. Would you mind to tell like uh, email address or what's the way that people can connect? Or is there a mobile app or what is that? No, we have a website. Website. Yes. And uh, they can connect to our, our website. Mm -hmm. What uh, is the website address? Globalreformbnb.com. Okay. okay. And there they will have all the information on our association, website. our statutes, our goals, how to become a member, when we uh, the results of the last general assembly celebrated that we it, it uh, in in washington um, yes, yeah you were here and we had a short conversation during that time yes yeah. so i believe that uh, people from different part of the world who is running the hospitality industry business they will be benefited from this you yeah. know from the reform bnb and uh, would you mind to explain a little bit like how you think this organization have been contributing to the short-term rental business owner? Yeah. First of all, uh, when when we met the first time uh, in, in New York, and then we have met uh, in different conferences in Buenos Aires, uh, in Barcelona, then it came the COVID, uh, and then uh, it was Paris and now Washington. In all of these conferences and now general assemblies, since we have been legally constituted as an international organization, we have been revising what we call the guidelines, the short-term rental guidelines. These short-term rental guidelines, it is a very practical tool where we have summarized all the important points that any legislation has to take into consideration, I have to offer in order to be a practical tool for the hoteliers in order to have what we uh, aim, which is the level playing field and uh, fair uh, legal legislation. So these guidelines that they will also find in our web are very useful. They have been very useful, for instance, for destinations like Buenos Aires or even Latvia uh, in Europe, that they have followed our recommendations, that they have taken our guidelines, they have taken it to their legislator and say, hey, listen, I need that there is uh, the obligation of registration. Hey, I need that there is a consent of the neighbors. Hey, I need, I recommend everyone to read carefully the guidelines that we have produced in order to um, have a better position to negotiate or to demand uh, to the national or regional or municipal legislator. But not only this, what we all have also prepared is a study, a case study of more than 47 destinations all around the world that we are all connected. So um, if you want to learn how all these 47 destinations have implemented the guidelines or they have tried to change some unfair um, situations, you will learn what they have achieved and what they have not achieved and the reasons they did not succeed and the reasons why they did succeed. Yeah. But I have to tell you something else, not on the short-term rental scene. What it was really important in Washington is that we have made the, the scope of our, our international organization a little bit wider. We are not only focusing now to try to get a better legal um, environment for the short-term mm -hmm. rentals. Yeah. We, we, we understood that it was crucial, it was essential yeah. that we had the global vision of the digital distribution. Right. Because more and more you see that uh, these big OTAs, the traditional uh, online travel agencies, name it Booking, Spedia, and so on, they are also starting to commercialize this uh, kind of short-term rentals. Yeah. And on the opposite, also Airbnbs and Huawei's start to commercialize uh, hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. So at the end, there is a kind of fusion yeah. and you have to see the whole spectrum of the digital distribution. Absolutely. And there are a lot, uh, there we have also to consider that it is not only the short-term rentals issue, what worries, and it, it's a huge challenge for the hoteliers. There are also these, what we call these unfair clauses, that yeah. the big OTAs, online travel agencies, with their uh, monopolistic uh, situation, mm -hmm. dominant situation in the market, they impose to the hoteliers in their contracts of distribution, like the rate parity, last availability, 
in a way they are that the hotelier in some cases they have lost the control of their own product <laughs> yeah that's yeah. why in washington we have also created and debated and approved what we call the guidelines on digital distribution, digital so distribution. we have identified different practices bad practices of the otas imposing to the hoteliers mm -hmm. that we are also asking and fighting in different parts of the world to get uh, them eradicated so mm -hmm. it is another field where we hope to be uh, useful and helpful to the hotels all around the world yeah of course and uh, i want to jump another issue that uh, you already mentioned you are um, the director of european affairs of Grammy, the Hotel de Barcelona. So how you would like to explain the tourism business post-COVID in Europe? Okay, I, I would say that it is surprisingly and, and happily, I would say that it has had a quicker recovery than we expected. And this is something uh, that I, I congratulate, of course. Uh, but I have to say that um, myself, I have had the opportunity to travel even outside Europe. And the figures are good in all continents because people with the COVID, they have learned that it is not so important of what you have, mm -hmm. but what you experience. So if you have to take into consideration the projections or expectations of tourism grow all around the world. Yeah. Because it is unstoppable. More yeah. and more, we want to discover uh, new destinies and to experience yeah. new destinations and people want to experience and the most important thing what you said is we recover so quickly yeah. after covid yeah and uh, i'd like to know that what are the challenges that you'd like to outline regarding yeah. tourism i would like to outline that we have a huge challenge of becoming a sustainable sector after this digital distribution topic that it's worrying very much and after of course then the other uh, big challenge of the sector which is the shortage of a skillful labor force that there is a problem that we can see in in many destinations and i would like to talk about it later on the third one in the podium of course it was the climate change has provoked many natural disasters affecting in a very negative manner the tourism industry and also the capacity of traveling. This is why we consider that if we want to be a sector of the future, as I was mentioning before, that we are not only the traditional sector, we are the sector of the future. We have to implement all these good sustainable practices. And we have an ambitious challenge of getting, of becoming a zero carbon emission industry. This will be something that will make us proud of ourselves, that we will be contributing to the planet mm -hmm. and will make also that our customers feel uh, proud of being accommodated in our establishments. Of course, and moreover, one of the most important thing regarding European tourism is it is considered as one of the expensive destinations, which is exactly. discouraging millions of people to take a trip. To Europe. What's your comment on it? Well, I will tell to you that you can travel to Europe for not such a big money. I mean, there are so many uh, incredible and amazing destinations in Europe that, of course, they are not uh, expensive, as you have mentioned. You only have to discover them. Of course, if you say that uh, you want to stay in the city of London, or you want to be in the five-star hotels in Paris, or um, or you want to have... But listen, have you discovered north of Slovakia, the Tatras, together with Poland? Have you lost yourself in the beautiful island of Cyprus? Mm. Well, of course, I'm not telling you to go to Mykonos. I mean, but there are many beautiful things in Europe, and even in the big countries like Spain or France or that they are to discover and they are not expensive. So you think those places are very affordable, right? I mean, I'm telling you that, uh, of course, like everywhere in the world, 
you have destinations that they will be expensive yeah because this is the demand and offer which makes oh. them more and less expensive but yeah. then you will have destinations to discover inside europe that they are not expensive at all and i recommend everyone well, not to expensive discover. like uh, paris barcelona or whatever like that. well you can come to barcelona you can come to paris and you can come to london yeah. and uh, not being expensive you can be hosted in a nice hotel not yeah. four or five uh, star, but in a nice hotel and then discover the beautiful surroundings of barcelona have you ever been in montserrat monastery no, 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 no. I've been in Barcelona multiple times, maybe 11 times. And uh, yes, I have been in Tarragona, the nearby city. Well, yeah. well it's beautiful, in, very nice. In you know. Tarragona or Girona. I recommend Girona. Girona. As well, yeah. And uh, I've been in the football club of Girona, which is a very promising club mm. in Spain. Yes. Mm. And one more thing I would like to make you questions is in Barcelona, the real historic restaurants you've been running for fourth generation. What is the speciality of this restaurant? Okay, the speciality of this restaurant is to make you feel at home. If you ask me what is the speciality, it is what the people really love from our restaurant. Uh, it is not only that we have two fireplaces or that you have these beautiful stones and boot. It is that it really, after 10 minutes, you lose the perception that you are in a restaurant and you feel that like you are in your place. Uh, this is what I'm feeling really proud of our place. In terms of food, you will enjoy uh, the traditional char grill meat, vegetables, mushrooms, and of course, the most exquisite Catalan uh, recipes. But of course, especially the ones who love meat. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> they really love it. We have, uh, you know, a secret, which is called uh, our uh, alioli garlic sauce you know that there are people that they only eat this garlic sauce in our place nowhere else because they say that of course it is the only place with this garlic sauce the garlic doesn't come back and this is because we use a secret ingredient to the sauce that i will never reveal to anyone who is not in my bloodline not even no. my wife knows about the recipe and uh, because it is like uh, for me more important the, the formula of the coca-cola are you a very good chef as well i like to cook yes i like to cook too yes millions of tourists visit barcelona every year yeah right and what is the secret of that number of tourists arrive in that city yeah i will tell you that barcelona has uh there is a lot of work behind so uh you have to understand and this is my officially recognition to this institution called Turismo de Barcelona, that is, um, they make an amazing job promoting our city, not only in terms of destination, but also for these uh, business meetings, uh, getting ferries, uh, offering the city, and what it is even more important, creating tourism products that they are linked to what we are. Then when, when you visit Barcelona, you can experience our history, our legends, our culinary treasures. And of course, what they have done very well, it's like they have started to see outside Barcelona, all these beautiful day trips that you can make. For instance, yourself, you have been many times in Barcelona, but you still have not discovered one of the most fascinating mountains, these uh, Montserrat mountains, with, this, with our monastery, with the history of our Black Madonna, the day that you will hear El Birulai, this song sung by these white uh, voices, uh, 12 years old boys, and you will cry because it's it really is a, a religious experience. It's something amazing. But then uh, you, I also um, encourage you to make one day trip to visit one of our amazing wine uh, uh, cellars or cava cellars. You have to, yeah. to visit Maza Abundancia, Codorniu, Ofrecenet, and, and that's because we have not stopped creating new tourist products that wake up the interest of the visitor. We are not telling someone, hey, come back and visit again the Sagrada Familia. Visit again the Parque. No, this, of yeah. course, they have already been there. But yeah. have you ever visited our uh, Montserrat, our wine cellars? Um, and of course, always link it to the territory, to the identity, 
and to the authenticity of uh, our region. An advice that I give to all destinations of the world. When you create new tourist products, you have to do it in a way that you do not lose your soul. Mm -hmm. You don't lose what you are. Because if you replicate something else, then the tourist will get lost. And yeah. precisely if they have chosen your destination, it's because they want to experience your destinations. You, you, right. The way you are. Do not pretend yeah. to be something else because the replicas, something. they can find it anywhere. So what you are and what is your originality? My, my another uh, big curiosity is I have been walking multiple times to the Rambala, which is one of the nice walking destination I ever experienced. Although I have walked in Paris, Sal de Gaulle Street, uh, nearby Paris, uh, I mean, get. But I feel very, very honored and amused and entertained when I walk in the Rambala from the city center to the town Columbus and take some pictures in the uh, sea beach. And when I, I used to be in Camp Nou Museum, it's a, one of the experiences that I never forget. A wonderful experience watching football from the stand of Camp Nou and cheering Messi and something like wonderful players. They were making goal against their rivals. It was so great feelings to be there. And I never get tired of watching Sagrada Familia, close by that uh, historic, you know, the, the castle. My friend has a restaurant, Ola Nepal. Okay. And okay. I used to be there multiple times. It's so You have wonderful. to give me the address. You have to give me the address. Yeah. I will visit. Of course, of course. And probably together, I would invite you next time when I'll be there. Fantastic. And you come and, to my place. Of course, sir. And tell me something that your connections with the Barcelona Football Club, which is one of the major reasons to attract tourists in Barcelona, the one of the biggest and prestigious club in the planet. Mm -hmm. So you are very close with their executives, with their members. Well, you are I, I am I'm close. I'm close to all members of Barcelona because we are a family. Yeah. Barcelona to be a member of Barcelona and to wear uh, to have Barcelona in your heart is it's it's like a religion. It's it's something that when you are a Barca fan, you are Kule. I mean, uh, let me explain you uh, uh, something. When when we have celebrated back in 2004 or 2005, yes, the General Assembly of the European uh, Hotel Industry in Barcelona, I brought all my European colleagues to visit the Camp Nou. And when we were there, uh, the first thing I said is, uh, welcome to my home because this is my second home. Yesterday, I hosted all of them in, in a dinner in my restaurant, my first house. This is Camp Nou, my second home. Oh, and yeah. Because it's my second home, I experienced there one of the most happiest moments in my life. I've been in every Sunday since I am five years old. So oh, going with my grandfather, then oh, with yeah. my father. Now uh, I, I'm bringing my children, you know, and I mm. hope that one day I will bring my grandchildren. And yeah. of course, um, every time that the, we have had elections to Barcelona presidential, um, we have hosted dinners uh, for the executive uh, boards that they were running to get elected. And it mm -hmm. has been a pleasure to meet all of them personally. And yeah. with uh, some uh, candidates, I have a very good relationship. Yeah. So yeah, Didak, uh, as I know that you have very good relationship with the uh, officials, including President Bartomeu and the current president, Laporta and many more uh, executives, also with other technical staffs as well. You are one of the members of the club, socio of the club. So what do you think is the best time of the club? People say Guardiola era is the best era when Messi, Javi and Iniesta were in prime. But what is your, your opinion regarding this? Okay, um, I will tell you, and this is very personal, that yeah. of course I've enjoyed as every football lover in the world this golden generation of Xavi, Iniesta, Messi, Piqué, Puyol, Busquets. Um, but um, I will tell you that uh, all tribute has to be given also to Johan Cruyff. Um, on the 20th of May of 1992, uh, I was in the old uh, Wembley Stadium and in the minute 111, Ronald Koeman 
together, uh, the, he scored an amazing free kick against Sampdoria. And he was part of a team together with Risto Stoikov, <laughs> Michael Laudru, Chike Begiristein, Eusebio. I have to say that only remembering this moment, uh, I'm getting touched because yeah. everything changed because Johan Cruyff. Johan Cruyff made out of our club a winning club. Winning. And he started the philosophy that then Guardiola brought to the excellence. Tiki-taka. Tiki-taka. Without Johan Cruyff, we would have never achieved the golden generation. And that's why, let me be a little bit, I would say, old or nostalgic. And I will tell you that if you have to make me choose, I will always come back to the 20th of May of 1992. Yes, the first Champions League you guys yes. won. It. You've been in the hospitality business since many years. How would you like to mention your achievements? Well, I will distinguish here from my, my, my role in the family business in the restaurant where I try to incorporate all the best practices uh, that I've learned from all around of all my international travels where I see things that I really like from other restaurants, from other hotels. I try to incorporate them in our family business. This is why um, in the last decade, I would say that we have enlarged our outdoors offer. We have now a huge garden with a beautiful chill out, two tenders. This has given um, a new and more green and more uh, comfortable um, we have a now a um, very nice installations to visit our restaurant. It is not only nice because of the 16th century house, but you have also this beautiful green terrace with the chill out, with the big tenders. Uh, yeah, this is one of my personal achievements in the family business. Mm -hmm. And as regards my, my job as an advisor, in, first in for the Spanish Confederation, now for the Barcelona and uh, for the international organization, I consider that I'm using my uh, practical approach because I am someone who is day to day uh, running a hospitality business to bring some um, naturality and explain with easy words uh, the big problems that we are challenging. So uh, sometimes what it happened to me is like when I started to, to do the job of uh, assistant or a legal advisor in, in Brussels, I found myself talking in a very uh, technical uh, vocabulary. And what I learned and what I think I have achieved is to transform these uh, very complicated documents in very simple words, um, making conscious uh, many hoteliers that they have to react and they could not be passive on yeah. this big challenge called short-term rentals illegal yeah. short-term rentals, to be precise. And of course, they cannot be passive, accepting to lose the control of their own product. That's why they have to get fair legal environment on the short-term rentals, and they have to eradicate these abusive clauses imposed by the old online travel agencies. Yes, of course. So your experience here and your contributes and achievements in the tourism industry, especially hospitality industry, is immense. And I believe that you will achieve more in future and your global reform BNB would have one of the major contribution in the industry. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And I'm really looking forward to your next visit uh, to Barcelona. We're going together to the new stadium. Yeah. and enjoying a nice dinner in the restaurant of your friend and, of course, uh, in my first home. Thank you very Thank much. You, TV Sunday, the power of truth.